So in the fall of 2017, I decided I wanted to make a sonic screwdriver for my brother for as a Christmas gift. Uh, and so for those of you who don't know, uh, sonic screwdriver comes from the show Doctor Who, and it's essentially this sort of electronic multi-tool that seems to have almost like unlimited capabilities. That screwdriver, it is harmless. Oh yes, harmless is just the word, that's why I like it. Doesn't kill, doesn't wound, doesn't maim. But I'll tell you what it does do. It is very good at opening doors. That is breaking and entering. Where did I break? Sonicking and entering. Totally different. Who has a sonic screwdriver? I do. Light. Who looks at a screwdriver and thinks, ooh, this could be a little more sonic? What, you've never been bored? There's got to be a light switch. Never had a long night, never had a lot of cabinets to put up. What are you doing? Helping. You've got a screwdriver, not built a cabinet. Really rude. And nothing says non-terrestrial like sonic screwdriver. Sonic heat! Good for staying! I can't it wood! What? It doesn't do wood! Hang on, hang on. I can't open it. It keeps stuck in the woods wall. Ooh. Anytime you want to help. Can't you sonic it? It doesn't do wood. That is rubbish. Oh, I don't just a sonic. Gun. You've got a gun. It's not a gun. What? I've got to invent a setting for wood. It's embarrassing. What's wrong? Do you not think it's done yet? I think a decent vet would give it an even chance. OK, well, use an app. An app? On your screwdriver, app it. Most certainly not. It doesn't do turkey. Nothing does turkey. Uh, it's essentially the sci-fi equivalent of a magic wand and uh but i wasn't really interested in making something just like a basic cosplay you know just some leds and a casing and little else i was treating this more as a uh sort of design challenge kind of how many functions and sensors and capabilities could i cram into something that was roughly in the form factor of a sonic screwdriver uh, and so uh, with that in mind i made this Here it is. This is yet another example of a project I've done that's uh, more than a little bit sketchy. It's not so bad with the tape on, but underneath the tape, you, well, you have this uh, sort of metal pipe in the middle here, and then on either side you have two uh, sections of PVC pipe. And then I uh, took a <laughs> used a flame to rework and kind of reshape the PVC pipe in places. And so in that process, it got a little bit, you know, kind of. Uh, some burn marks and I, well, I expect I imagine there's some burn marks and some maybe a bit of charring and whatnot and then for some reason I <laughs> only used red wire for all the wiring and so the end result is this sort of sketchy partly melted partly charred PVC pipe filled with red wire which is uh just a little bit too <laughs> close to a um it's a little bit just too similar to a pipe bomb for uh, for for comfort, but of course it's you know it's it's not it's a, a sonic screwdriver. Um, now at its core is an Adafruit Feather M0 with a little proto board section uh, that I of course took advantage of when I was doing all the wiring. Uh, and then as for the user input, you have at the back here uh, very professionally taped on with duct tape a power switch. Uh, so there's a battery kind of back here in the. Uh, in the hilt, and then of course there's a power switch, and then to um, work it, you have a potentiometer here and two buttons. And so the potentiometer is uh, used to you know turn the dial, used to select the various settings and abilities, you know whichever um, capability you want to have, and then the buttons actually you know will activate that capability. Um, and most of the cap most of the uh, you know the functions of this device only require one button, but uh, you'll see one uh, one requires both. Uh, and uh, so originally I wanted to use a, a sliding linear potentiometer that could, you know, slide up and down. There's even like a slot cut out in the PVC pipe. Um, but I couldn't get it working in time. As I said, I, this was a Christmas gift from my brother and I, I wound up working all the way down to, I was like even soldering on Christmas day 
um, you know, soldering the last couple bits on. And so I, I just couldn't get it working in time. So I uh, wound up switching over to a normal potentiometer. But I really wanted that sliding potentiometer because one of the uh, screwdrivers in the show has a similar kind of, you know, sliding, uh, extending motion. And that's kind of how you work the device. And so I wanted, uh, you know, I thought the sliding potentiometer was a nice, uh, you know, kind of nod to that. Um, but this this works just fine. So we're happy with that. Uh, now, uh, as to, so these are the inputs, and then of course there is a uh, little screen here that uh, will show the uh, you know various sensor measurements and the, the you know the you can read whatever sensor data on that. And um, this display, as I said, this was all I made this back in 2017, and it's been kind of just uh, it's a little bit. Uh, rough around the edges now, seven years later, or how many years, I guess, yeah, around about seven years. Um, and uh, this display actually wasn't working, and then I just wiped it off right before, and it started working again, so I'm kind of <laughs> happy that, that that's working. I had uh, have it all wired up just in case it stops uh, working, so I can read the stuff off of the uh, serial monitor. But, uh, so yeah, you have this display to, uh, you know, see all the sensor data. Um, about, okay, so we'll start off with the basic functions. You'll see up here there are some uh, LED sequins that um, <laughs> very wonderfully wired with some bare uh, wire connections. Uh, it's really funny <laughs> looking back at what I thought, you know, what 2017 me thought was acceptable. Uh, some of these solder joints are kind of like, oh, that's a little bit not too great. And then, of course, uh, <laughs> you'll see I, I, I wasn't even really using... Um, electrical tape uh, back then. And so <laughs> you'll see like there's a uh, solder joints that are um, covered in masking or uh, scotch tape of all things. <laughs> uh, but okay, so basic function, first function, we have these uh, LED sequins and uh, press, you set the setting to you know, anywhere between 700 and 750. Uh, and that's not actually, <laughs> Um, in the video, it's, it's flickering, and in reality, it's also also it's also flickering because uh, the code is um, has room for improvement. So the, <laughs> there's some flickering in how it's like refreshing the display uh, based on because I uh, back then coded it, uh, you know, it, uh, not as well as it could as it could be. Uh, anyway, so push the button and you get LEDs, which of course uh, that and that all the uh, screwdrivers in the show have, you know, at the core, the the most notable thing is these L this LED at the front. So of course you have to have LEDs on this one, and then uh, you know it works as a nice little flashlight as well. So all right, so when we've done to the next setting, uh, seven fifty to eight hundred, and this one is an ultraviolet LED uh, for you know potentially reading secret messages and that sort of thing. Uh, now we'll move on to the 800 range. 800 to 900 is the uh, ultrasonic sensor up here. And of course, uh, it's in the name, right? Sonic screwdriver. You have to have a, uh, you know, ultrasonic sensor if you can. Um, and so this uh, ultrasonic sensor has a range of uh, six to 256 inches, I think with like a, about an inch uh, resolution. And so you can just, oh my, I think I just broke the display again. Um, that's all right. Good thing I've got it plugged in. Um, when you press the, uh, you know, this first button, it'll get the, uh, the measurements and, uh, right now, oh, there it is. Uh, yeah. So you can measure everything with the, uh, ultrasonic, uh, measurement sensor. Uh, right now up to past 900. Uh, and this is the there is a LiDAR, um, sorry, not LiDAR, <laughs> I always mess those up, uh, a uh, distance, time of, flight, time of flight distance sensor. And so that one has a range of, uh, can measure between 50 and 120 millimeters. And uh, so, you know, set the, uh, oh, there it goes again. Um, can read, uh, you know, push the button and read those uh, LiDAR, or not LiDAR, laser measurements. All right, now going back down, Built into this as well is a compass. Let's see, you gotta go to the 600 range. Okay, oh, there it's back on. Keeps keeps coming in and out, okay. So built-in compass and uh, you can get the heading, of course, for the compass. And then when the heading 
reaches zero, which is north, um, the LEDs light up. And I've actually, I was having some trouble with the uh, compass getting some, you know, when I was uh, sort of dusting this off the other day, uh, I was having some trouble getting accurate readings from it now. So I can't really, we'll see if we can get, get it to, Twenty. There we go. Um, is that north? Yes, that is north. Excellent. The final feature is the GPS. There's a GPS antenna in the hilt here. And so the idea is that you'll be uh, at your starting location, wherever that is, and you push button number one, which will take your start current starting GPS coordinates and save them to variables. And then you go off on an adventure, uh, you know, wherever, uh, maybe a hike or something like that, and you wind up in a new location. And when you're in your new location, you can push button number two, and it will take your new coordinates and then run computations with the new coordinates and your starting coordinates, and then figure out the um, compass direction back to your starting coordinates. So it's sort of like a, as the crow flies uh, GPS back to you know back home back to your starting coordinates and then uh, using the built-in compass you can of course uh, it it will um, you know you can point the sonic in the direction of the starting coordinates and when the uh, when the sonic is lined up with those you know, pointing in the direction in the right correct direction the and the you know based off of the compass measurements it will light up the uh, LEDs kind of similar to how the uh, you know, it works with just the basic compass setting. And so that's it. This is the Sonic Screwdriver in all of its uh, duct tape glory. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, I'll see you later.